hummingbirds, and lost and found species? Welcome to Nugget 387. We will be covering two articles in this Scientific American April 2024. The first one is talking about hummingbirds and the second about kitty cats. So you'll want to hang on for that. Hummingbirds are the Olympic gymnasts of the avian world. They zip around at remarkable speeds, hover in place, and fly in all directions, including backward and while upside down. They can even perform flips. Quite the aerobatic creature, aren't they? To achieve such agility, hummingbirds use distinct modes of visual processing to control different types of flight, researchers report. In particular, the scientists uncovered a seemingly unique mode that guides hummingbirds' speed when they are flying forward. We watched this little guy in Tucson quite some time, didn't we? Yeah, he wasn't bothered by us in the least. They are amazing creatures. Very photogenic. Yes, they are. The findings come from an analysis of more than 3,500 hummingbird flights inside a 12-foot-long tunnel with a perch at one end and a feeder at the other. Moving patterns projected on the tunnel wall manipulated the hummingbird's senses of optic flow the perceived motion of surroundings while traveling through the world. The speed of that motion, called pattern velocity, is a key visual cue that many animals use to adjust their own speed and position as they move. The researchers expected that if the hummingbirds were using pattern velocity cues to control their forward flight speed, they would see the bird's speed or slow in sync with vertical stripes projected on the side walls. But instead, it seemed more the case that they have their own internal speedometer or internal gauge. For forward flight, says study, co-author Balaga, a comparative physiologist at the University of British Columbia. Any movement that defied the hummingbird's expectations of how their surroundings should change slowed the birds down. Even vertical stripes moving toward the feeder, which the researchers expect would make them speed up, any movement that defied the hummingbird's expectations of how their surroundings should change slowed the birds down. Even vertical stripes moving toward the feeder, which the researchers expected would make them speed up. When hovering or moving up or down, however, the birds based their motor commands on the projected patterns they saw. The ability to switch between these different flight modes underlies a hummingbird's singular agility. The researchers expected that if the hummingbirds were using pattern velocity cues to control their forward flight speed, they would see the birds speed or slow in sync with vertical stripes projected on the side walls. Hummingbird brains have evolved to make rapid transitions from visual signals to motor outputs. You watch them fly through the forest, and they're dodging trees and moving branches in the wind, and each other, he says. They are adept at taking in lots of complicated visual information and making a robust and safe flight plan out of that. And when you watch a hummingbird, they're rather quick animals, aren't they? Very. Very quick. But that's amazing how they say uh, the hummingbird brains have evolved. How do they know that? That's a good question. Did but they see a more stupid or more I, agile, less flight attentive guess, hummingbird somewhere? I, I think when they were dinosaurs, they probably did. Yeah, that would prevent your agility a little bit. Yeah, I suppose so if you used to be a brachiosaurus. It is ridiculous. They say the birds evolved from the dinosaurs. That's nonsense. Please be sure to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And tell a friend about our YouTube channel. Obviously, God made this thing to do exactly what it does, and it does it really, really well. Well, it's almost like they're swimming through the air because they flip their wing around so that whichever way they're flapping it, it's, it's moving still them up. It provides lift, yes. But they say the hummingbird brain evolved. Well, God said in Genesis 1 that he made the winged fowl, and it reproduces after its kind. He told it to multiply. When a hummingbird has a baby, it's, I think, always a hummingbird, right? Of course, Steve. Of course it is. It is nothing else. Further research will delve into the ways the birds predict how their movement will affect the flow of scenery around them. Understanding that could help engineers improve drone technology. Can we develop a mathematical model for this prediction of optical flow? If so, that could be very useful for drones. This is another example of where mankind sees what God has created and makes technology and whatever they're putting together mimic what God has done because what he creates is pure perfection. I love the way they ended this article because that is exactly right. That's it's kind of the point I wanted to show here today. 
once again, it is man developing something by replicating what God already established in nature. Fascinating stuff. April 2024, Scientific American, a second article, Lost and Found, Why Are Only Some Lost Species Recovered? So in this article, they're going to be talking about species, well, we don't use that word, but they are, we'll use it for their for the point of this, that they have thought have been extinct, and they're finding them, some that they claim have been extinct for centuries. I also see here that you went to this other website, rewild.org. Org. That looks like an interesting site. Yeah. The search for lost species is all about looking for plants, animals, and fungi that have been lost to science for at least 10 years and sometimes hundreds of years. Oh, good. All is not lost. We can protect and restore our planet. Oh, isn't that special? The International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources has what they call a red list. And it is the most complete list for vertebrates, especially birds, mammals, and amphibians. They list 711 vertebrates that are known or presumed extinct since 1500, including 181 birds, 113 mammals, and 171 amphibians. We know of almost 600 extinctions, each of invertebrates and plants since 1500. And I see you're pointing out the word no in this. Yes, they say they know it, but yet it's not considered known because they have to be missing for at least 10 years, but sometimes hundreds of years. And then what if they find them, which they have found? Your point is they don't know it. They just think it because they haven't seen one in this time frame. Well, basically, that's that's correct. Well, anyway, the flat-headed cats happens to be one of these. But the article goes on to say that one-third of lost tetrapod species have been rediscovered. Well, then they weren't really lost after all, were they? Scientists catalog 1,280 lost and rediscovered tetrapod species. To be considered lost, the species must have gone unrecorded for at least 10 years. And they said here that this bush frog in India waited for more than a century to be discovered? To be rediscovered? Rediscovered, yeah. This bush frog is just thinking about this, going, okay, I've hidden from him. Yeah. Ten years, I'll be lost. I guess and I'll let it, him find me now. That's a crazy statement. That is, is a crazy statement. I'm thinking these little bush frogs are just minding their own business out in India, and they could care less what we think. I kind of think that's the case. The problem is they considered this thing gone. He wasn't gone after all. Is your point that a lot of times environmentalists will panic over something that it's extinct when indeed... It might not be. It's just we haven't seen one in a while. Exactly right. This article ends with everything is connected. Every single species does matter. It behaves in an ecosystem and fulfills a purpose within it that then underpins all of the life that we have on Earth. Well, in a sense, that's true, but it's because that's what God told it all to do. Well, we need to respect and appreciate Absolutely. God's creation much more than we do. That is for sure. Absolutely, but not worship it, which is all too often where science, so-called science, goes today. God made every living creature, and he saw that it was good. God put exactly here what he wanted here, and he liked what it is, and he told it to reproduce after his own kind. And that's exactly what it does. We have so much information on creation versus evolution. Share it with a friend. Thank you.